I'm so alone. <laughs> I wish I could go back in time and have myself aborted. I wish I could tell my birth mother that I was just going to kill myself anyway, so she shouldn't waste her time having me. <sighs> such a disappointment <laughs> to everyone but especially myself <laughs> I just think about how much easier it would be if my parents had just adopted somebody else I think about how much happier they would be You know, like if they had a daughter that they were actually proud of. <laughs> and I think about how much easier it would be on my coworkers if I just didn't work there. Then they wouldn't have to deal with this bullshit, you know? Me having fucking PTSD and like not being able to come into work because I just haven't been able to sleep because I've been so fucked up. <laughs> Like, I feel like I have a hangover or something, and, like, I don't even drink anymore. I, like, couldn't sleep, because I just... kept thinking, you know? And so, like, whenever I did get to sleep, it was, like, a fucking nightmare. I had another nightmare about LCD sound system, you guys. I'm so crazy. Like, I can't. I can't function. And I, I don't want to just take something that allows me to function so that I can, like, blend in with the rest of society. You know? Like, I don't feel like that's the solution. Because I've been on medication. It doesn't fucking work for me. I just. I can't fucking stay on it. <laughs> And I do think this is a gift, it's just a mighty big curse right now. This is the price I pay, you know, for being alive. <laughs> I just feel like such an asshole. Because I feel like people think it's some sort of choice, you know? Like, that I choose to have outrageous anxiety, you know? And people think it's a choice, like, if you don't take medication. I'm like, why can't I just live with this? Why can't I just go through it? Like, it's really fucking hard, but I'm still doing it. I'm still here. I just wish that people could see how hard it is. I need a fucking medal, man. I need a plaque. I need a parade for me. All for me. But not just me, for everybody going through this. That's the only reason I'm doing this, is all for you, so you don't feel so alone. Like, and it probably seems like I'm doing it for me. If I make any kind of money doing comedy, that's that would be, like, fucking amazing. That's probably not going to happen. But I'm just doing it. 
for those two people in the room that really relate to it. Everybody else I can give two shits about. Because I know they can give two shits about me. Because they don't understand anything that I'm talking about. Well, they probably understand a little bit of it. Yeah, but I'm too weird. I'm too weird and I'm too fucking emotional. Too intense of a person. I'm such a mess, you guys. I'm not getting any cleaner with time, you know? Like, mental illness, it's not about, like, figuring out a way to, like, not have to deal with it or, like, pretend that you don't have it or whatever. It's, like, Figuring out how to make it work for you. And sometimes I really can make crazy work for me. It's weird. Just some days I can't. And today's one of those days. And I just know that I'm such an inconvenience for people. Like, I know my manager's mad at me right now. I'm sorry. Do it today. I just keep thinking about killing myself. I mean, I'm not gonna. Don't freak out. Well, eventually, though. It's in my MO to do that. We have the highest suicide rate. Can you see why? Don't you hate people that aren't suicidal? Don't you wish that they could just have PTSD for like one fucking day and then they'd be like, holy shit, I'm never going to judge anybody ever again for committing suicide. I just wish that I could, I could have told my mom, you know, the one that had me in her belly, the one that just gave me up for adoption because I'm sure that she thought that that was such a noble thing to do. Fuck you, bitch. Like, I'm so bitter. I'm so bitter towards people that don't have psychological problems, that just have happy fucking families and they just, like, can just, like, live their life and not, like, analyze it all the time and not feel the fuck out of everything and... have like a normal fucking sex life they're probably not masturbating in advanced financial you know <laughs> god I just wish I could tell her like you know giving up a baby for adoption still feels like rejection you dumb fucking cunt like, I'm not fucking grateful that you gave me life even though it was Thanksgiving, and I probably should change my fucking attitude. This is like every morning, you guys. You don't realize this because I don't shoot in the morning, but I probably should because a lot of times I'll just wake up and start fucking yelling. I'll be like sitting up in my bed just yelling at nothing, and this is borderline. This is what it's like. And so if you do this a lot, this is what you have. You don't have bipolar. A psychiatrist is not going to diagnose you with borderline because that essentially means that they're going to be out of a fucking job, you know, because there's not shit that they can do for us. I feel like there's some sort of contract that every psychiatrist and therapist is like required to sign, you know, where they're legally obligated. So that they can't tell us to commit suicide, you know. 
Like they have to sign some sort of waiver that says, I will not tell my patient to just kill themselves. <laughs> and I feel like every fucking shrink that I dealt with, every therapist that I went and saw, I feel like they were just biting those words, you know? Just kill yourself, honey. It's been time. Nobody understands you. This world hates you. Especially America. America will continue to oppress you. You're already in hell, right? You're already in hell. Mm-hmm. Yep. I live in America. It's eternal damnation every day. Unless you're in the 1%, then it's the kingdom of heaven. Get film in the morning. This is good. Yeah, this is so good, right? This is so fucking good. See, I've just been like this, like, on and off, just, like, crying. In and out of a panic attack. And, like, weed helps, but it's not gonna, like, save me, you know? It's not going to save me from this. And sometimes I just want to feel it out. I don't want to just get fucking high. So that's the thing. Like, I know people probably think I'm a hypocrite because, like, I do pot, but, like, I refuse to do psych meds. But it's like, well, pot actually helps me. And, like, I guess I'm a control freak about it. And so, like, I want to do the stuff that I want to do and not just the stuff that some like shrink prescribes me that doesn't even know what the fuck is wrong with me anyway like fuck psychiatrists they're so dumb like they don't know shit I don't think that they know what bipolar disorder is it's like they got plaques on their walls they got their like degrees like framed it's like, I should make my own degree in me and, like, frame it and just, like, put it up everywhere. Like, yeah, I know myself a lot better than, like, you think you know psychology. And I feel like I could help a lot of people that know themselves like I know myself, but I feel like it would be way more beneficial to people like me to, like, hear from somebody like me. That's why I stress that it comp comedy's therapy. And comedy's therapy, especially for the people that, like, swear that it's not, you know? Otherwise, they wouldn't feel the need to keep validating the same shitty experience, like, 15 different times, you know? Like, if it's not therapeutic, like, why the fuck do you do it? You're just doing it to be entertaining. Oh, you're just doing it to be cool, because being a comedian is so fucking cool. Like, no the fuck it's not. <sighs> Like, the only way that being a comedian is cool is if you're like me and you say shit that matters. And, like, there are a few comics in the scene that I, that actually talk about stuff that's important, you know? Shout out to Brad Henderleiter. I know this is weird that I'm, like, doing a shout out to you when I'm in bed crying having a PTSD episode, but there it is, babe, there it is. <laughs> And it's like, I think about people that I've met that, like, mean a lot to me, and I wish that I could see them more. And I, it's like, I thought, you know, maybe if I, if I saw them more, like, they'd remind me that I'm not as alone as I think I am. I know that's why I need to do the comedy stuff, because, like, It's therapeutic for other people to watch me perform. I mean, that's incredible. That's incredible that, like, I can take all these crazy-ass thoughts and, like, do something with them and, like, make somebody else feel less alone. Dude, you guys, a tranny told me that I have balls. A tranny! 
told me that I have both. I'm going to repeat that again. A tranny told me. Girl, you have both. 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 <laughs> Shout out to Calypso. I know that she might be watching this right now. Well, not right now at this moment because I'm filming it. I have to film it before I put it up on YouTube. And I need to put this up on YouTube. But there's a lot of stuff that I end up not putting up. And once again, my storage space is low. But yeah, it's like, she told me something, and when she said this to me, like, we were sitting at the bar, and she said this to me, and I started, like, tearing up, but I don't think that she knew. But she told me that whenever I get up on stage, she feels like she's up there. I don't know, that's, that's really incredible that, like, I could make something that would do that to somebody else because like that's how I feel when I listen to like St. Vincent you know like I feel like man I could have written all these songs <laughs> I could shred guitar like this if I could play guitar at all you know it's like I see myself in her I just never thought that I had that ability to do that and I'm realizing that I really do god I feel like such a nice thing You guys like my awesome alarm? <laughs> it's like I know that it's Friday. I shouldn't call out on a Friday because it's bad. And I'm worried that I'm going to get fired. I don't think you're going to get fired. It's just... She's probably going to take you off the schedule, though. I don't know. There's nobody else to replace me, though. Like, if there was somebody else to replace me, I could see her doing that, but... It's like, I feel bad, but, like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to just be a different person? Because I can't. Like... That's the thing people fail to realize, like, with medication, like, yeah, like, I could take medication that could regulate my anxiety and my depression, but the thing is about it, I have a personality disorder. This is why I'm trying to stress this, okay? I have a personality disorder, and they actually say this, like, online. If you go online and, like, you read about personality disorders... It'll say, like, regular therapy tactics don't work on people with personality disorders. Duh. It's like we know all the fucking tricks, because we're the shrink. You know? Like, we know what's going on with us way more than they do. It's like, I'm so crazy, I've become a fucking therapist. How's that? Now, if only I could get paid for this shit. <laughs> this makes me mad. But it's like, yeah, I can... I can take meds to make my depression and anxiety not so loud, but I feel like because it's a personality disorder, like the medication's not going to work for that, you know, because I'm still going to have all those thoughts. I'm still going to have like the impending doom, the surrounding gloom, <laughs> you know? Like, those thoughts aren't going to dissipate just because I'm on fucking Citalopram or whatever the fuck. You know, like, I've been on all kinds of shit, and, like, it doesn't work for me because, like, I'm used to functioning in fucking chaos. 
and I'm used to like just dealing with it on my own. And so if I'm not freaking out, then it's just like I'm numb to everything and I don't like that either, you know, because then I can't cry and I can't do what like comes most naturally to me. I can't even get angry. So then it's like I'm angry about not being able to get angry, but am I angry? You know? <laughs> that is so frustrating. I'm just... I'm done, man. I just need to go to fucking Europe. Like in Germany and Norway and like other European countries, because <laughs> I don't know of any more. <laughs> they uh, just like welcome you. Like if you're crazy, they just invite you into their house and treat you like family. Like they love you. Like you've always wanted to be loved, you know? They just accept you like you've always wanted to be accepted. Like, I hate this country's way of, like, handling fucking everything. It's like, it's like if there's ever a problem, America is like, no, this isn't a problem. Like, and they just deny it up and down, or they immediately just, like, try to douse it, you know? They try to cover it up. Fuck that. I'm here to talk about it. I'm here to engage. I'm here to be fucking real. I'm just so tired of this shit, though. Because it's like, this is this is how stupid people are. They think that just because you have something wrong with you, like, that means, like, you're not doing enough. You're not being proactive. It's because you're too busy lying in the bed, just feeling sorry for yourself. Fuck you! Fuck you and your father that stuck around. Fuck you! And your psychological issues that aren't fucking present. <laughs> I feel like every child should be molested, because I believe in equality, you know? I think that every child should have a shitty-ass life, you know? So it's not just like... <laughs> <laughs> these like happy kids that have happy families that have parents that love them and accept them for who they are fuck you I'm so bitter you guys like, like if you're on the side of things like how can you not be bitter like seriously like how can you not be bitter that like like, all the kids you go to school with. Like, have, you know, families that they're not afraid of. Or, like... And don't get me wrong, like, my the parents that adopted me, like, they're... They tried. But it's like I never felt comfortable. I mean, I still don't. I just feel like such a disappointment to them. It's like my dad doesn't even turn around to acknowledge me. You know, when I when I go home. It's like he doesn't even turn around. <laughs> and I understand I'm not the daughter that he wanted. 
And he'll never say that out loud. But I know that's how he feels. And my mom's a lot better. Because she actually does love me. She doesn't understand me, but she still loves me anyway. Because that's what moms are supposed to do. They're supposed to love their kids and be there for them, even when they don't want to. And I will never have a fucking child. Like, the next person that tells me that I should just get pregnant, and then I'll discover, like, the meaning of life. Fuck you! Like, you don't have to deal with this shit. Like, if you had to deal with this shit, you would not be, like, telling me to get pregnant. Like, that's the fucking solution. You know? Like, why would I bring a child into this mess? Why would I want another child in this world to have to deal with this shit planet, all these shit people on this shit planet, and these fucking shit emotions in their shit brain? (laughs) Fuck that. Why the fuck would I do that to a child? I feel like... Like... Adoption's what happens the least. I was really lucky that I got adopted so quick. You know? But my parents, because they're they're from, you know, like... Leave it to Beaver... Generation... It's like I was a total mindfuck for them. Because I've always been really out there. I've always been really weird and unconventional. I've been this way my entire life. I depersonalized in my crib. I saw myself in my crib and I said, who's that little crazy bitch? Oh, that's you. That's us. You know, like depersonalizing is when like you, you kind of take yourself out of a situation and you just see yourself in the situation. Like you're watching a movie. That's what it's like to be a quiet borderline. It's like you're always watching a movie of yourself. I can help so many people. So many fucking shrinks don't know what the fuck they're doing. I do have balls, goddammit. I have balls to fucking sit here with Beethoven. Say hi, Beethoven. If it weren't for him, and see, here's the thing. My parents gave me this dog when I was eight. And, like, he gets me through way more than any live person. Any fucking medication. Any fucking Jesus that died on a cross. I feel like I'm dying on a cross every goddamn day. Making all kinds of sacrifices for people to just fucking judge me and they think I'm a bitch. All because I say things that they don't understand. <laughs> I guess this is the fuck you video. <laughs> fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> I'm so angry. I don't think it'll ever pass. Shout out to Elliot Smith. He's another borderline that did actually commit suicide. That's what I'm telling you. Borderlines do this. We we kill ourselves because the pain is too fucking great and nobody around us acknowledges it, cares about it, or understands it. So, fuck you, society. Like, I hope that more people commit suicide all because of this shit. Like, I really do. Like, if you've accomplished a lot, like, if you if you feel like you've put yourself out there enough... I mean, I I know that people are probably going to be mad about this because they think that suicide's wrong, but you're wrong for thinking that suicide's wrong. Because, like, if you don't know what it's like to feel on this level... See, most people feel on, like, anywhere from, like, level 1 to 10, you know? Real emotional people are at a level 10. I'm at a level 25 to 50, okay? So, like, don't... Don't fucking judge me for committing suicide. You have no fucking idea how hard this is every day to wake up with this kind of shit going on inside your head. And I feel like I've done really well with it, considering. And the only people that acknowledge that are people like me. People that say, you know, you should give yourself a pat on the back. The fact that you're doing stand-up comedy, that's just fucking unbelievable, you know? Like, you're awesome. (laughs) 
like I went to the psych ward, right? Because I kept waking up like this. And, uh, the chick that analyzed me, well, she, you know, did the assessment. They do a lot of assessments. And she just asked me a bunch of questions and she thought I was really funny. She said, it's amazing that you've gone this long without killing yourself. And she wasn't trying to be funny or anything, like, like, she was just being serious. And, I mean, I feel like that's why I went, just to hear that. Just to have somebody validate me and say, congratulations for making it, because I know it's been hard for you, you know? It's like, that's why I get so fucking angry with, like, white people that want to bitch about how, like, Black people, you know, they do it to themselves. They bring it on themselves. Like, they've been stigmatized their entire life. Like, <laughs> don't always end up talking about racism, you guys. I always end up talking about it because it makes me so upset and I relate to it. This is why I don't feel white. Because <laughs> I'm stigmatized, you know? Nobody fucking understands me. And it's like, if I tell them that I'm crazy, they're either all up in arms about it or they just want to medicate it or they'll stay the fuck away from me, you know? It's like, people are so afraid of what they don't understand, and they don't care, and they don't want to ask questions, and they don't want to just take the time to get to know somebody and figure out why, you know? It just makes me so angry. Oh, I hope that something really drastic happens in this country just turns upside down, right side up, and upside down again. Fuck this country. See, I'm worried that once I have enough money to move to Europe, I'll have already killed myself. You know? You gotta push yourself to do this. I know. I feel so shitty. It's like anytime I don't feel shitty, it's like I'm just in a dream, you know? Like I'm just living in a dream where life doesn't suck so much and somebody loves me unconditionally. Somebody will save me from all this shit. It's like I know that's not true. I think that's why I keep having dreams about LCD sound system. You know? Because I've like idealized them in my head. And I've idealized them because I relate to them so much. So I'm worried that if I meet them it won't be what it what it's been in my head and that I won't matter to them in the way that they matter to me that's just what I want I just want to matter to somebody 
I just want people, somebody to fucking beg me not to commit suicide, you know? <laughs> just get down on their knees and say, please, please don't do it yet. Please don't kill yourself. Oh, he doesn't want me to kill myself because that means that I'd kill him too. Because I'm the only reason that he has been given life. You know? It's like I give him thoughts. I give him a personality. I have a lot of animals in this bed, you guys. See? Say hi. I have a lot of animals that can jerk off. <laughs> Can you see Lily? This is Lily. This is Cisco. You guys already know Mr. Orange. Mr. Orange can jerk off. I, I really should do that in my comedy. Like, I should bring him up on stage with me. Just have him fucking jerk off. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, I, I disrupted your sleep. Oh, hey, Titty, what's going on? <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, I rarely wear a bra, mainly because I do let it all hang out. I like to be comfortable, you know, and I don't like bras because they're very uncomfortable. Like, I feel like any woman that says that they're comfortable, she's lying to herself unless she has, like, gigantic titties, you know? If you've got gigantic titties, I understand why you wear a bra because, you know, you don't want them to sag and it's uncomfortable for you. But... If it's uncomfortable for you to wear a bra, why the fuck do you do it? Just because it's, like, a social norm? Turn on the light. I hate this light, though. It's so fucking bright. Jesus Christ. I just wish that there was somebody out there that really understands me. I mean, I'm sure that there is, but it's not like I'll let them in. See, that's my problem. I meet people a lot that I can relate to, but... It's like I invite them to my house and I can't wait for them to leave just so I can... be with me again. I mean, that's why I'm saying, like, this personality disorder, like, it's not... It's like I can't just medicate my emptiness. I can't medicate this dream that I'm living in. You know, like, I've always had that. Like, since I was a child, it's not going anywhere. And I feel like you sort of get more apathetic with time. You know, because you're just like, you know, well, this isn't changing, and like, there's nothing I can do about it. Like, there is something you can do that's constructive, but it's, it's not going to take away those feelings. It's just going to make those feelings, like, have meaning. And I, I feel like the way that people in this country respond to mental illness is just so ass-backwards. It's not helping anybody. Now you have a bunch of people that are misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder. And I bet you they're not going to do as much with their life. Maybe they're less depressed and they're able to, like, wake up with 
without race car anxiety and go to work and make that peanut butter and jelly sandwich for that child that they obviously should have aborted. Maybe they'll do that with a smile on their face. You know? <laughs> Don't you love those fucking, like, psych med commercials? Do you want to pretend that everything's awesome? <laughs> You want to be excited to push your child on a swing, even though you not so secretly hate your child. <laughs> it's just like, I'm so bitter. Like, and so like, I can't help but just like hate happy families and like hate happy couples and just shit on everything because like, I'll never have that ever. I will never have that because of my personality disorder. I'll never have that because my mother didn't fucking abort me like she should have. God damn it. Like, but I don't want to blame her because I don't think it was her fault that she did that. I, I will blame the fucking pro-life movement because I'm sure that like, she didn't want to get heckled out and called a baby killer, you know? And I know, like, I've gotten into arguments with people about this because they're like, well, how the fuck do you know, like, what she went through? Like, I'm like, exactly. Like, that's fucked up to just, like, have a kid and just send it out there into the fucking world and not know what happens to it, not want to get any kind of update on its life. You know, I just think that's cold. I mean, which makes sense, though. If she's a borderline, that makes sense, like, how she did that, you know? Like, I'm just going to carry you in my womb for, like, nine months, and once I have you, good fucking riddance, crazy bitch, you know? <laughs> Do you think that she killed herself? She either killed herself, or she died of alcohol poisoning, or maybe she's a stand-up comedian. I don't know. <laughs> I just wish that I knew her. I wish that she could hold me right now. I can't imagine not feeling this, though. can't imagine not having to go through this. Do you guys like this tattoo? Do you see it? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a yin yang. Thing is, the tattoo artist really screwed up. But I feel like he screwed up on purpose. Because, like, see, there's way more dark than there is light. <laughs> Makes sense with me. I'm so done. So done with the shit life, man. But I, I feel like this, this obligation to talk about all this stuff, like it's like a moral responsibility, you know? It's a moral responsibility that I have to talk about the things that are really uncomfortable because I can be effective. I know that I'm effective. And I can help people. I can help the 6% of society that really need my help. The other 94%, y'all can go fuck yourself. Don't go suck a dick. You don't know how hard life really is.
unless you're a minority in this country. Like, nobody's going to save me. Nobody's going to fix me. Nobody's going to make everything all better. Nobody's going to fuck me harder than I cry. Just to let you know. I mean, you just saw that. You saw how hard I was crying. There's no fucking way that you're going to fuck me that harder than that. Like, just give up on that dream. So all you guys that, like, you're watching these videos and you're like, girl, I want to get to know you. No, you don't. You say that, but... If you had to deal with this, like, day after day, uh, no. My cat is the only one that can handle it. <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> he left me. He left me to go be with another cat. Like, seriously. That's why he's gone. Maybe you should get a cat. You should get another cat. I need to just get an animal of some sort. I really want a pit bull. But I know that my parents would flip their shit if I got a fucking pit bull. Because my parents are dumb. And so, you know, for the same reason that, like, white people are afraid of black people. Um... <laughs> So many people in this country, I think, are afraid of pit bulls because we've stereotyped them. We've put them down in society. <laughs> and so now it's their fault, right? They had it coming. This makes me so fucking angry. If you think about, like, how horrible, like, pit bulls are treated. And then... Society just has this horrible idea of them because of that, because of what society has done. I, like, I do not understand ignorance. Like, I don't understand how people can be so fucking dumb. And, like, you discriminate against an entire, like, breed, like, that entire breed that is, is, like, evil, you know? They're mean. Like, pit bulls are, like, the sweetest fucking dogs. Like, they're so loyal. <laughs> and people think they're mean, all because people mistreat them. Feed them fucking raw meat and, like... Force them to get in, like, dog fights and shit. Like, they, I mean, it's not fair. Like, how is that fair? <laughs> yes, I see it everywhere, man. It's like people just don't want to take responsibility for the shit people that they are, you know? And then they want to blame somebody else. And if you've been, like, stereotypes in society your whole fucking life, if people just assume that you're gonna rob them... Like, this is the thing, like, I, I see this all the time, and I'm sure that my, my coworker is really pissed off right now. My nigga, Miss Tina. She's probably mad that I'm not showing up, because, you know, she's got my back. And, like, and I've got her back, because I see all this, all this racist bullshit in the drive-thru... Where it's like, you know, she's taking care of them, and, like, I can tell, like, just by the way that they're looking at her, you know, that they're fucking racist, and, like, it just makes me want to fucking throw punches through that drive through window. You know, I just get so fucking mad. She said something the other day to, like, Another one of our coworkers is like, I guess he doesn't like me or something because, like, the same look that I was just describing that people give her in the drive-thru because she's black, like, this guy gave to me, I guess because I'm weird or I'm crazy or whatever. And she, she saw it. She caught it. And she was like, what you got against Amy? Amy, work. <laughs> it's like, this guy is, like, one of the laziest people I've ever met. And he's, like, a hothead. And it's just, like, he's so fucking dramatic. It's like most of the guys I work with act like little faggots and they're not even gay. 
It's like, <laughs> you should just start calling them that. You should just start calling them, like, all these derogatory terms for, like, gay people and women that they try to use against us and against the gays, you know? But, you see, that's what you got to do. You got to call men cunts. You got to call straight men faggots. I'm not going to use the N-word because I just used it. But, you know, if you call the, if you call a white person... You use the good side. You use you, you didn't use the bad side. Yeah, yeah. There's there are two connota- there are two different variations of that word, and one of them is is white and it's evil, and the other is black and it's awesome. <laughs> it's so stupid, though. I mean, the way the white people deal with that, that word is like, <laughs> it's funny though. It amuses me because I'm like, oh, why you think that you're like not a racist because you refuse to say that? Like, if you're still like thinking about them in a certain way, then it doesn't matter. Like if you call them that, like they're, it's still going to register that you feel that way about them, you know, like. Like all these people in the drive-thru that, that judged her. And it's like, it just makes me so upset because like, I feel like they're judging me at the same time. Like whenever I'm around a racist person and it's like, I, I just think to myself, like, God, if only they knew like how black I am, like on the inside, you know, they, or they wouldn't be acting that way towards these black people in front of me, you know? Because, like, I really want to fucking set fire to shit. Like, I totally understand why they're doing what they're doing. And, like, that's the thing with white people that they don't fucking get. I'm like, you know, if you've been discriminated against your whole life, all because of the color of your skin, and people make all kinds of negative assumptions about you, all because of the color of your skin, and you get to watch the government fuck you in the ass, all because of the color of your skin, and you get to see the president say and do all kinds of fucked up shit, and... You know, I mean, I don't understand why anybody's, like, required to kneel during the national, or <laughs> to, whatever. What are we supposed to do? Uh, we're supposed to put our hand over our heart and sing the national anthem and stand up, right? Why? Why Why do we have to do that? Well, because we're American citizens, but because we want to, like, honor our veterans? Like, it, as if that's, like, the only way to honor veterans, like, why don't you write your own goddamn song? It's probably gonna be a hell of a lot better than the National Anthem. Shit. Especially when, like, this country is such fucking horse shit. Like, why would you want to support it in any way? And, uh, like, I think it's great. I hope that they kneel more. Like, just to fucking show them. And the thing is, like, it's gonna get bad. Like, if they keep doing that, and you'll see, like, this society turn into, like, a totalitarian regime. Like, you will fucking see it. It just makes me angry that so many white people can't understand why black people would be pissed off enough to set things on fire. I'm like, well, nothing's changing. That's why they're so mad. Like, and the fact that you can't see that, like, it's just like it's, it's people are gonna stay ignorant they insist on staying ignorant and i think that we need to just have an open honest discussion and i think that drugs are gonna bring the world together like that's what i <laughs> that's what i really believe in my hardest of hearts you guys i mean honestly like that's why i started hanging out with black people anyway <laughs> it's because they had drugs and i wanted drugs and they gave me drugs It's like, how can you not be pissed off about racism? Like, if, if you claim to be, like, like, not a racist, how can you not be infuriated all the time? It's like, I just don't think that people see what I see, you know? They just, they don't see, like, how... 
society mistreats certain people they could just for, for something they can't even control like that's the thing like I mean maybe that's why I can re- I can relate to being black so much because like I have a mental illness and so it's like it's it's not anything that I chose you know and it's it's ridiculous that people will act like oh well it's it's you like it's your fault you know just like all these black people that end up incarcerated like, well, it's their fault that the society thinks that they're just going to end up incarcerated anyway because they're black. And so, like, it's like if you've been trained your whole life to just think that everybody in society is out to get you because of your race, you know, like, I can't even imagine, like, how hard that is, like, to, to really, like, literally be black and have the those misconceptions about you like everywhere you go it doesn't matter like you can be educated like if you drive a nice car like you're gonna get pulled over because a cop is gonna assume that you stole it you know like there's no way to win there's no way to win this fucking racist ass country like just uh i don't know man And it's like, you know that crack was invented by the CIA, right? Like, <laughs> I feel like, like people that deny these truths are just horrible people, you know? Like, black people have fucking syphilis because of the government. Black people are addicted to crack because of the government. You know? It's all just to keep them oppressed. To keep them docile. And, like, that's why I don't trust psych meds. Because I feel like in this country, like, that's exactly what they're trying to... They're trying to keep us quiet. Well, fuck you, government. I don't have a smartphone, so you can't track me. It's scary, though. The stuff that I'm saying, it scares the shit out of me. Because I know that I'm right. I don't want to be right. You think I want to be right about how racist this country is? See, there are problems with equality, though. (laughs) As I mentioned earlier... If you want to talk equality, just have everybody struggle as much as everybody else, you know? It's like, it's not fair. That's why I don't understand how, like, white people can talk about equality. They're like, everybody's created equal. I'm like, yeah, it's easy for you to say that because you're fucking white, you dumb fuck. Like, (laughs) I don't know. If you had psychological problems, you'd understand what I was talking about. Because, like, when it comes to, like, brain chemistry and everything, and, like, I don't want to, like, make it seem like I go through so much more than anybody else, because I know that everybody struggles in their own way. But, like, you have to admit, man, people that have psychological problems, they struggle more than people that don't have psychological problems. Black people, they struggle more than white people struggle. Um, Gay people struggle more than straight people struggle. Non-Christians struggle more than Christians. Because, I mean, in this country, I don't know how it is everywhere else, though. Because I've never been anywhere else. And I know that I need to go. Just get the fuck out of here and move to Germany. Maybe they'll love me. I don't feel so bad, though. I can't change anything. I can't change myself and I can't change anything around me. So what I do is I I try to turn it into something else. I 
I really want comedy to work. It does work. You know that it works. I mean, it's keeping you alive now. Where's my cell phone? Oh my god, where's my cell phone? I gotta find it or I'm gonna die. Well, I guess Joe Kelly's back in town. Shout out to Joe Kelly. He's really funny. So weird. I don't understand. Like, he went to Seattle, and then I guess he came back. I don't understand why people come back to Tennessee. As if this place is so fucking great. I feel like... I feel like anytime that people leave and go somewhere else, it's like they really just want to have that same kind of, they, they want all those connections that they had where they, they were living before, you know? I'm like, no, you're not going to have those because you move. Like, that's what happens. And it takes a while. God, Seattle. It just sounds awesome. <laughs> I just like their weather over there. I'm constantly raining too. It's, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I just... I accept that things aren't going to change not in my brain, not in my body, not in the shit country. Um, I feel like something's wrong with my eyes. My friends of mine have that thing. You know what I'm talking about? Where, like, their eyes are, like, constantly shaking. <laughs> That's actually really cool, like, if, if that were, like, if you could do that, like, on command or something. Like, if you could tell your eyes to do that, <laughs> you could just do that to fuck with people, you know? Maybe that's happening to me, and I just... <laughs> well, no, man. I have really gorgeous eyes, you just never see them, because I'm always covering them up with the Zoe De Chanel frames. I hate it when people just assume that I'm a hipster because I have, like, hipster glasses. Oh, fuck you, dude. I don't like she and him. I mean, they're alright. <laughs> they're alright. They're good. They're alright. <laughs> I like M. Ward more than I like Zoe. I just don't... It's not even, like, Zoe that I have a problem with. It's just the idea of Zoe. It's, like, this ideal, you know, like, she's a hipster. You know, like, like that quirky... She could totally be a bitch, but she's gonna act really sweet right now kind of thing. Like... I'm not saying that Zoe Deschanel is a bitch. I'm saying that she 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 could be a bitch. Like she probably is, you know, on some level. Everybody is a bitch on some level, though. Yeah, that's true. I want to go dancing. I think I need to do that. Why don't you just dance in your fucking garage? 
Yeah, I could do that too. You've been talking for over an hour. I'm just going in and out of my disillusion. All the reasons why I'm so fucking sad. <laughs> like, if I could just make a list of that and just read it off. Like, okay, top of the list. My mother didn't abort me. <laughs> Like, man, she really should have done that. <laughs> My mother didn't abort me. She rejected me. Just sent me out into the world on Thanksgiving Day. My dad won't fucking talk to me. He won't even look at me. Um... My mom's really uncultured. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Society's stupid. Well, that's always on the list. Um, pit bulls are mistreated and judged and then mistreated again. Um, what else? What else? It's racism. Always racism. God, I haven't even talked about gender yet. I haven't even talked about how uh, most women that claim to be feminists are, like, catering to the very thing that they claim that they're fighting against. Uh, that makes me sad, too. It makes me sad that so many people are trained to act in certain ways and they just follow suit. just with women I feel like it's so ingrained in our personalities you know to like obsess about our image and our our hair and our bodies and our weight and that little zit on our face like our eyebrows and our nose and our teeth and our fucking Mustache. Like, see, this is why I refuse to, like, shave my mustache because, like, it's awesome. Like, I like mustaches on men anyway. It's like if women had mustaches, I think they'd be hotter. <sighs> and beards. Goatees. Sideburns. <laughs> you know? It's like I like women that look like men. They're hotter and they're usually a lot smarter because they're not wasting all their time worrying about how they look and if people are going to like them based on how they look. And I don't know. I think if you're a feminist, what you need to do is uh, stop buying beauty products and stuff. Like if you're, I mean, I'm not saying like don't wash your hair and stuff. Like if you... You just want to do stuff to be clean, like, that's cool. But, like, doing stuff to try to, like, look really good and impress people and, you know, spending, like, three hours on your hair and your makeup and wearing really uncomfortable shoes all because they look good. It's like you could throw your ankle out wearing, like, uncomfortable shoes. And you're going to choose to wear uncomfortable shoes all because of what people are going to think about you when you wear them. Like, it's just what you tell yourself. Most people, especially if they're me, they're going to think, wow, she's probably a cunt, you know? <laughs> Anytime I see a bitch in heels, I just think, man, that, that bitch is a cunt. <laughs> Straight up. I'm not saying you are, but I'm saying that, like, that's the assumption that people make. It's not like, oh, damn, she's fucking hot. I want to bone her. Which is another thought. And that's, I don't understand, like, why women do this. It's like you dress all provocatively because you think that's taking your power back. 
Like, and then you, you, you're gonna get mad and you're gonna play the victim because somebody makes a remark about your titties when you got them hanging out? You know, that's why, like, I don't get mad, like, when people say anything about my tits, because look at them, baby! They're right there! I don't care. Make comments all you want. Like, you're not the reason why I don't wear a bra. Like, I don't wear a bra because it's uncomfortable, so... But I have to expect people to, like, make comments like that because that's how people are geared. Like, men are geared to be obsessed with tits. Like, just what what they do. They're, they're men. They, they obsess about tits and they talk about dicks. Like, that's it. That's all they do. <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of men out there that aren't total dogs, but most of them are. So, yeah, I mean, I just, I hate it when women play the victim. And then they, like, want to act like they're empowered. Like, they're empowered by wearing a short skirt. <laughs> and I'm not saying, like, you should rape a bitch just because she's got a short skirt and she's drunk and she's passed out. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that... I don't know why you're optimistic about society and... male behavior. Because it's, it's, like, obvious that... that You know, most men are fucking shit. Most women are fucking shit. Like, most Americans are fucking shit. Like, if you if you actually think in this country, you are a rarity. You know, like, if you question things in this country, like, I don't know, like this, like, hey, why do I do this all the time? Hey, why do I need this in my life? Why do I need this in my pocket everywhere I go? Why do I do this? Like, if you actually question stuff like that, it's good for you. You're not like everybody else. You should be proud of yourself for that. You probably have a mental illness. <laughs> That's the thing. I want people to take pride in it. You know? Take pride in your crazy. Because it's the only thing you've got. Oh, God. I just don't want to fucking do this, man. I can't believe you called out again. I can. I knew this was going to happen, too. I feel bad, though. Because I just think about everybody struggling, and it's all because of me, you know? But, like, it is true, though. Like, if you, if you work in the food industry, and, like, you're short-staffed, and then, like, somebody calls out, like, that just screws everybody over, and, like, I just, I don't want to be that. But I also don't want to be, like, crying nonstop. Every little thing just tears me apart. That's crazy, cause I'll it's like I'll go like days without like really feeling. You're numb though. That's the thing. You're fucking numb. You're in a dream. Once you realize that the dream is just a dream, it's like, fuck this life, you know? <laughs> it's just emptiness, like, fucking swallows me whole. Like, when I wake up with that emptiness, it's like, there, there's nothing that can fill that void. Like, comedy doesn't fill a void. Are you kidding me? 
that's why I'm so self-righteous about this. So I'm like, oh, it's filling the void for you? Wow, your void must be like this, you know? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> it's like, I don't think that you understand. I feel like I have a boy the, the size of the entire country. That's because this country is like void of any empathy. So it's like I have all the empathy that nobody else has. And that's why I get so angry when it comes to race and animal cruelty and Adoption. <laughs> I just really want to destroy the pro life movement. Like, I really just want to take the pro life movement down. And, like, I feel like feminists need to, like, be more proactive when it comes to that kind of shit. See, I'm going to pretend to have an abortion. I'm going to go to abortion clinics. I'm going to pretend to have an abortion. Um, I'm not going to go inside. I'm just going to, like, walk in and just, like, wait to be yelled at. <laughs> and called a baby killer by some dumb fuck. And then I'm going to, like, take out a baseball bat and be like, No, I'm not a baby killer. I'm an idiot killer. And then I'm going to fucking beat the shit out of all these pro-lifers, and they're going to be fucking terrified to go to the next abortion clinic. <laughs> Isn't that fucked up? It's like, it's symbolic, because a lot of these babies that just get tossed out into the world, you know, get beaten every day and touched inappropriately by... God knows who, God knows how many times. And so, you know, it's like, it's my problem with people is that they refuse to look at any other side than their own side. You know, they just look at whatever's most convenient for them to look at. Well, like, all I fucking do is look at everything. You know, I'm constantly trying to like find something that I missed. You know, because I feel like a lot of times when people argue, Well, they're a lot. Of, I mean, they're just missing the point anyway. Like, if you're not arguing in hopes to learn something, then like you've lost it. Like, you should never go into an argument um, hoping to win. You should never go into an argument hoping to change that person's mind. You should go into it hoping that they teach you something and that you can teach them something. But people are so fucking one-dimensional and they're so close-minded and they they don't give a fuck about anybody else. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, you said already you don't give a fuck about people that don't have psychological problems. Well, yeah, um, because those people are the ones that tell me that I need to take medication. They don't know fucking shit about it. So shut the fuck up. Like, if you don't have psychological problems, like, do not give advice to somebody that does. Or just be prepared to get fucking punched. It's bullshit, you know? It's like, I, I make all these mean speculations about society and about the pro-life movement and about, you know, my birth mother. Because, like, I don't know who the fuck she is. It's like, she didn't want me to know. It's like, I have to live with that. That's my fucking reality. And you guys can be like, oh, well, you're just playing the victim. You're just feeling sorry for yourself. Like... I feel like you are the victim. Like, if, if you're, if you have a mental illness in this country, you are a victim. Like, people will fucking mistreat you. They'll judge you. They'll think that you're faking it. They'll think that you just want attention. Like, and I mean, there are definitely people that do. But I don't understand. I mean, that's fucked up. Like, 
But here's the thing, though. Like, if you're a hypochondriac, like, hypochondria is, like, where you, you think that you have illness. Like, you think something's wrong with you. And, I mean, then there are people that, like, feign illness, you know, like, they fake it. But you can do that to the point where it actually makes you sick. Like, literally sick. So, it's, it's like a... I don't want to say it's double-edged sword. It's like a, a quintuple-edged sword. Like, there's just no way to win. Like, if you have a personality disorder, the only thing you can do is art. That's it. Art and drugs. Don't believe in God. God's just going to fuck you up. Uh, but yeah, man. I feel like I can say all the things that I say because of my perspective, because of my illness, and because of the fact that... <coughs> I was given up for adoption. Like, people that have been adopted or, you know, they've gone through the system, like, they they know, like, how hard that is. It's like most people I know that have psychological problems that are fucked up in the head are, like, pro-abortion, you know? It's just all these fucking optimists that are like, you yeah, know, God's just gonna take care of everything! Fuck you! <laughs> like, man, I've just been praying and praying for my brain chemistry to change and God still hasn't shown up. Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you for thinking I'm, I'm just exaggerating so I can get out of work. I need the fucking money right now! Like, that was, like, a serious debate in my head. It was like, man, if you call out again, like, you're not gonna have money. It's like, I don't show up like this. I'm too much of a fucking mess right now. I'm too pissed off. Too sad. <laughs> Yo, you know, you're, you're just, <laughs> you're just really, really sad because you're pissed, right? Yeah, man, fuck anger. Anger, sadness, turn inward. So anytime that you, you think you're really mad, you're just super duper sad. Isn't that maddening right there? It's like, fuck, there's no escape! <laughs> there's no escape from sadness. Like, that shit pisses me off. But then I'm like, well, does it really piss you off? <laughs> or does it just really sadden you? <laughs> You should just start shooting videos in the morning. I should. <laughs> Bedroom chats. <laughs> Thoughts from the bedside. Suicidal thoughts? Homicidal thoughts? I'm just such a wreck, man. I feel like this is a good video, though. You're saying a lot. It's because I'm in the bed. <laughs> I'm in my place of comfort. I just hate everything so much. <laughs> Hate fucking everything. I really hope I don't get fired. If they fire you for your fucking anxiety, I mean, I wouldn't say like sue them or anything, but like, that's just really shitty. like what do you do with that though 
sucks. Like, it's a genuine problem, you know? I will say it's my eating habits, though. I didn't eat anything yesterday. I drank, like, one of those, like, naked juices with protein in it, and I told myself that that was a food supplement. And I also smoked a whole pack of cigarettes, which I also told myself was a food supplement. So... <laughs> I just can't take care of myself sometimes. And it's like I'm worried that if I don't die from cigarettes, I'll die from like anorexia. Which is lame because I just I still think it's cooler to kill yourself than to like die in either of those ways. <laughs> <coughs> My friend Jenny texted me. Jenny. Like she's an actual friend. That I've met in comedy that really gets me and I really get her, you know? And like she told me that if I wanted to move out to Los Angeles, like she would totally come with me because I know she wants to get the fuck out of here. It's like, I really want to believe in something. I really want to believe that there's something better that can happen. That I'm not just stuck. But I just don't have any faith in that. Like, I have faith in the things that I say. And what I believe, I know it's true. <laughs> Faith in my mental illness and the talking about it helps other people. I know this because multiple people have flagged me down and told me that I really helped them. Like I said, a tranny told me I have balls. When was the last time that a tranny told you that you have balls? I'm sure it never fucking happened. I'm sure it never will happen your entire life because you don't have balls. I cry, then I get angry. I cry, then I get angry. <laughs> it's like I'm so sick of people being fucking ignorant. Like, I see this mental illness, race, uh, Pregnancy, gender, sexuality. It's like, you're ignorant. <laughs> and because you're ignorant, I have to suffer for your ignorance. Not just me, minorities, anyone stigmatized, gays, blacks, pit bulls. I really should get a pit bull. And there's so many people that are oppressed and, you know, not just the people that I mentioned, but, you know, that's why I'm trying to sign because I know that the deaf community is also oppressed and people don't try to understand them, you know? Like, I don't understand, like, fucking Americans are, like, so nationalistic and they just, like, refuse to learn any other language. Like, they get mad that Mexicans speak Spanish, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, it's their culture. Like, they're gonna, they're gonna talk in the language that they learned. They still work harder than you, so shut the fuck up. Nationalism is, like, the biggest, like, load of horse pucky.
It makes sense why, like, a really shit country would be, like, patriotic. You know? Be so proud of your racism. Be so proud of your fucking ignorance. Be so proud of the fact that you're oppressing, like, a lot of people that live here. And... And so the people that are doing all the oppressing, like, it makes sense why they, you know, fight to keep their power. You know, I don't understand Nazis. I don't understand. Like, I mean, I would totally have coffee with a Nazi because I really want to know why. Because I don't want to be ignorant as to like what their agenda is. You know, (laughs) I want to know. So what is it, Nazis? You don't have enough power? Really? Like, what are you fighting for? Like, you already have everything that you want. I just fucking hate most things. Everything, really. Except music and marijuana and movies that are thought-provoking. And really great conversations that I can get lost in with people that are like me. And sushi. That Those are... <laughs> Those are things that make life worth living. I tell myself anyway. Don't kill yourself. Just go eat some sushi. (laughs) (laughs) You do feel like the sense of accomplishment, especially if you can use chopsticks. Like, I... That's the thing. This is what I'm talking about. This this is ignorance. You know how many stupid-ass Americans refuse to use chopsticks? (laughs) god fuck america it's like there's a sick part of me that just like wants north korea to just fucking nuke us you know that's not gonna fucking happen like we have so much militia over here are you kidding me like so much money put into the military like you really think that like like we have so many weapons over here (laughs) like why are people even concerned about that it's just a fucking way to control americans and get everybody to freak out and think that something really bad's gonna happen you know like 9-11 cia like fucking uh isis cia there's a reason that a 9-11 happened when it did. And there's a reason that ISIS rhymes with crisis, okay? People aren't smart enough to, like, see this stuff. But I am because I'm mentally ill. And I don't follow social code. I'm not conventional. And I don't take medication. So fuck you, government! I'm sure the CIA is going to call me in for questioning. And I'm going to die. They're going to fucking kill me. And then you're going to know the shit was real. The shit that I'm saying. They'll probably just kick you out of country. You'll end up like Snowden. Yeah. That's cool, though. Maybe I can be with Snowden. Maybe Snowden's my soulmate. I think that he is. Because anybody that's that much of a free thinker and will, like, put their life and their freedom in jeopardy in order to tell people the truth and tell people what's really going on. You're my fucking hero. And he worked for the fucking government. There are good people who work for the government. So if you work in the government and you watch this video and you hate what you're doing, follow in Snowden's footsteps. This world is such a horrible place. Like, this country is so doomed. Like, you guys are just so fucked. Especially with social media. Like, you are so fucked. Like, you guys are all addicted to a cellular phone. It's not just a cell phone, it's a smartphone.
I need to come up with a joke that like spoofs that name. <sighs> You'll think of it eventually. Yeah, I know. It's funny how many people make fun of me for still having this, uh, where is it? Where's my phone? <laughs> <laughs> people make fun of me for having this dinosaur phone, right? Guess what? I'm not doing this all day long. I don't have this in my pocket because I don't need it all the time. I don't need, like, to constantly distract myself because I'm mentally ill so I do that already I'm in a dream I'm here to educate you about how what you're doing is going to destroy your psyche it scares me because I don't want to be right about any of this stuff I really don't I wish that I was wrong I wish that people were smarter. I wish that people wanted to to learn things. I wish that people asked questions. I I wish that people didn't want to stay ignorant. You know, like I, I thought ignorance was bad. You know, and there's so many people that are just pissed off and they don't want to talk to the other side. And I think that that's wrong too. You know. Like, I don't care, like, what the other side is saying that you disagree with. Like, you still should listen to them. Because then you'll know, not only will you know what you're fighting, but, like, you'll get a different perspective on it, you know? Like, you should listen to other people. Like, that's how, that's the only way that we're going to get out of this, is if we fucking listen to each other and we educate each other. Like, education expels ignorance, not getting offended by something, you know? Getting offended doesn't do anything but stir a bunch of drama. That's it. And really, the only person that's negatively impacting is you, the person that's offended. So just think about that. Like the next time that you want to get mad that somebody says something that you don't agree with, and then you're just like, oh, well, I'm offended. He offended me. <laughs> get over yourself, you fucking bitch. Like how fucking important are you? That like, oh, nobody's allowed to say stuff that you disagree with. Nobody's allowed to just make a comment that like you don't, you might not understand. Like, back, back to, the, like, the feminism bullshit. <laughs> like, I mean, you know how many, like, women would get, like, so upset, like, if somebody, if some guy, like, made a derogatory comment about their body or some shit? It's like, yeah, that's what they do. Like, you should expect that in fucking society, you know? But getting offended by it doesn't change anything. In order to change it, you have to do something about it. Like, not just get mad. Like, I don't know. Like, do a fucking art project or some shit that makes that person look like a fucking idiot. And, like, if you put all this time and effort into into a feminist project, I feel like that that's that, that speaks a lot louder than just wearing a feminist t-shirt and putting it on Instagram and pretending that you don't buy beauty products all the time. You know? Or pretending that... You know, you're not sucking your man's dick because you know that he buys you things that you want. Like, it's just, uh, it's so typical, man. So fucking typical. So you can make fun of me all you want because I don't shave my armpits and I don't wear a bra and I don't, I'm not a lady. You know how many guys, like, they try to, like, I can tell that they think that's going to bother me. And I'm like, no, dude, I work harder than you. Like, you have a penis and I think it's worthless. You might as well cut that bitch off. You know, I'm sure you don't do anything with it. <laughs> I am so mean, dude. I'm so fucking mean. Like, my dick is so much bigger than you think your dick is. Like, all the dicks in America, like, if you guys all, like, whipped your dicks out and made them touch each other. <laughs> if y'all, y'all held your dicks around America, like, like, just did a circle where you just, like, pointed your dick at somebody, you know? 
<laughs> See, these are stupid ass thoughts that I'm thinking right now, but it's funny though. Like, just imagine that. Just like, imagine a bunch of guys <laughs> that are probably, they're protesting the feminism, the feminism uh, movement. Uh, and so, yeah, they're, they got all their dicks out and they're, <laughs> they're all touching each other with their dicks. Cause that, that's so, that's so masculine, right? <laughs> it's like guys talk about their dicks all the time. And so like, I talk about my vagina and my tits a lot, but I, I talk about that in a way that like, I feel like guys would talk about it. Like, because I, I, I try to show them, like, this is how you sound. And, like, fuck women that are, like, all about being ladylike. Like, fuck you. Like, you're the reason the patriarchy still exists, you dumb bitch. Like, you are the reason. <laughs> like, oh no, I don't fart. I don't poop. I don't do anything that's gross. Because I'm a lady. I don't swear. I don't masturbate. I don't... <laughs> Fuck you! Dumb cunt! They get offended by the word cunt, so I say it as much as possible. You know? It's like, I want to use the C word the way that black people use the N word. Like, that... <laughs> I want to do that. Because fuck you. Like, you're not going to, like, make me feel... You're not going to, like, downgrade me with that word. Like, belittle me. Like, I feel like a lot of guys, they, they use that word against women, you know? But, like, if I could call it a cunt, that's fucking awesome. I feel like that's, like, that's like a trophy you just gave me, you know? Thanks. I think I'll willingly call myself a cunt in front of a lot of people. Because I can be a cunt, but I promise, I'm just a labia. You know, I'm just a little teeny tiny part of the cunt. Like, not the whole thing. A lot of bitches are the whole thing because they feel like, oh, well, I have a cunt, so I'm, I guess I'm supposed to act like one. Um, it's like a lot of guys have a dick. Act like a dick, you know? Talk about their dick all the time. <laughs> you know, if I had a dick that, well, I do have a dick, but, you know, that's why I talk about my unicorn dick all the time. Like, if I had an actual dick, though, first of all, I don't think I could handle it, you know? Because I would just always be erect. That's why I don't buy it, like, when guys say that they're so horny. I'm like, no, you're not. You'd have, like, a constant boner. I know because I have a, a boner in my brain like at all times like you would know you would know if I had an actual dick <laughs> but because I don't have an actual dick you know I can just internalize all that uh, uh, oh god okay play with my asshole play with my asshole play with my asshole <laughs> Just internalize that and don't think that that's what I want from you, please. Boys, boys with your teeny tiny peckers that I'm sure you just want to fucking rape me with, right? I'm sure that's what you're thinking about. Do you have any idea how many men have like a rape fantasy? Do you have any idea how many women have a rape fantasy? <laughs> yeah! It's forbidden, right? That's why, like, so many men want to have, like, anal sex with their girl. See, I've, I've had anal sex. I just, I just always think I have to poop. Like, every time. Because, you know, if you got a dick up there, it's like you're used to, like, the only thing being in your asshole is poop. Right? And so, like, it's weird when there's a dick in there. And it's moving around. And you're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> this should be going out, not going in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Do you guys like this this uh <laughs> this bedroom comedy special? D d yeah, <laughs> it's great. It's me like going in and out of the fucking. <laughs> Just 
sob fest. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna keep talking. <laughs> Let's see how long we can make this. Let's just keep talking. We're like, just stay in the bed for like five more hours. Oh, God, no. See, I kind of want to like immediately put this up on YouTube, but it's like I always worry like when I call out of work that they're like going to check my YouTube account or something and be like, oh, well, she's doing things. So obviously she's not. See that. But also that's why I want to put this up because like. I doubt that anybody is going, hey, let's check out Amy's YouTube channel and see what she's actually up to. I feel bad that sometimes I just can't do it. I just can't be the person that people want me to be. The reason I work so hard is because of my anxiety. Like, I don't think people realize that. They just think that you're a hard worker. I'm like, no. I work like a Mexican because A, I'm super horny. B, I'm super crazy. And C, I'm super suicidal slash homicidal. So I'm constantly fighting those urges. That's a lot of shit that I have to deal with mentally. So it's just like, that's what motivates me to just work so fucking hard. That's what motivates me to just go and go and go and go and go and go and go. And it's just sometimes, like, when I get like this, though, I can't get myself out of it. And so people just don't understand that. And I just wish, like, that all the people in my head could watch these videos. And I wish that they could see me. But they won't. I mean, there's some people in my head that do watch the videos, and I really love you and appreciate you. And I want you to know that. Like, that anybody that takes the time, you have no idea how much I appreciate you for that. why I don't like being a comedian because there's such arrogance with it and I know I sound really self-righteous but I'm self-righteous because it's so hard for me you know and like there's so many people I think it's easy for them and they just they're like oh yeah I'm a comedian I'm so awesome because I'm a comedian I'm like are you saying anything that's going to change the world because if you're not then I don't think that it, it matters what you're doing like, oh, you just want to be famous. You want to be famous and you want to, you want everybody to know that you're a fucking comedian. You want to make everybody laugh. I mean, that's cool to want to make everybody laugh. That's a good thing. But like, I just don't see how people can like take pride in like just getting up on a stage and like talking about themselves. Like, Especially when I feel like most people aren't even, like, really saying what they want to say anyway. I feel like if people just said what they wanted to say and they weren't afraid of their image, they would be so much better at it, you know? And there are people in the scene that I know that are really good at it, and it's I feel like it's because they're not concerned about that, you know? They're just like, well, this is the place where I can, like, say all the things that I really want to say that I can't say in, like, regular-ass conversation. So, you're welcome. <laughs> but it's like, I just think, like, who, who the fuck's gonna, like, sit through, like, a two-hour-long video <laughs> with some crazy bitch, like, just crying on and off, yelling about how fucked up America is. Like, People don't want to watch that. People want to watch stupid shit that they don't have to think about. People want to watch stupid shit that they can't relate to, you know? Like, it's okay if you can relate to something on, like, a superficial level, but if you relate to it on a personal level, it's too much. You know, I've noticed this. Yeah, but it's like... So many people make fun of me for my mental illness. Like, how do you think that makes me feel to know that, like, I'm the only person 
It's like I do get special treatment. Like nobody has any problem at all like saying shit about my set and how crazy it is. And like I don't hear like anybody else that's been stigmatized getting made fun of the way that I get made fun of. It's just cuz like y'all still think it's socially acceptable to like hate on crazy people. Y'all still think it's socially acceptable to, you know, make fun of that. You know, it's still okay to say that somebody's crazy, you know? It's not okay to call a black person black. <laughs> it's like if you even, like, make, like, a, just a statement, like, just, you just state a fact. Like, you know, uh, I'm wearing jeans right now. You know, like, somebody will get mad and be like, no, you're wearing pants. Don't call them jeans, they're pants. They don't want to be discriminated against. You know? It's like, if you say anything about something that isn't personally about you, then, like, people feel like they have the right to get offended by it. And it's so fucking stupid because, like, stand-up comedy is where you can say whatever the fuck you want. At least that's my understanding of it. And, like, we either have freedom of speech or we don't. But I think that's not improved to us that we don't. But it's just, like, I've been lectured. You have no many, you have no idea how many times I've been lectured by various people in the comedy scene. People that I like, too. That are just so scared of, like, what I'm gonna say on the mic. I'm like, you know, I don't give a fuck about my approval rating, unlike you. I don't give a fuck about my image, unlike you. I don't care. Like, go ahead and call me a racist. I know that I fuck black people. So that kind of cancels that shit out. If only my vagina could talk. You know, it's just like, if you just make, like, a speculation. Like, oh, black people act like this. White people act like that. Mexicans are mucho horny. Like, oh, no, th they don't have a lot of kids because of that. Like, no. That's why they work so hard, too, because I'm mucho horny. That's why I work so hard, because I'm mucho horny. That's why people tell me I work like a Mexican. See, I figured this shit out. It's just so stupid, though. Like, if you just make any kind of statement about somebody, you know, I mean, it's 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 getting down to, like, gender, you know? Like, that's why I go out of my way to, like, just not get offended when people, you know, mistake my gender. Because, like, I don't care. Like I said, like, I have a unicorn dick, so, like, I might as well be a boy. So that's fine that you think I'm a boy. Like, that's cool. But it's just, like, do you have any idea how many, like, women would get offended by that? Like, if you... <laughs> like, it's just, it's just so stupid. Like, there... Nothing is getting better. Nothing is ever gonna get better. All because you guys insist on being ignorant, stupid, judgmental fucking cunts. And like, so many people, so many people, mainly white people. <laughs> well, there are really awesome white people though that I've met. That's why I did the shout out to Rod Henderlighter, because I know that he's sick of being lumped in the same category with all these other white shitheads, you know? Because he looks like he could be, like, a white shithead, you know? He's got that that look to him, you know? But he's sweet as can be. He's a teddy bear. Just sucks. There are a lot of teddy bears. You know, like, a lot of guys are, like, really cool and real honest, and they're not, like, typical dudes. It's like there are a lot of women out there that aren't, like, typical women, and they don't give a fuck about their image, and, like, they just dress how they want, and... You know, like my friend Jenna. Like she stopped wearing heels a long time ago. It's just like, it's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. Like all the stuff that we're expected to do, all the stuff that we expect from like other people based on things that we don't even actually understand. And yet it's like, if you just make a speculation, especially if it's a true speculation, people get so mad about it. It's retarded, man. You know how many people would get mad because I said the word retarded? 
But it's really you guys that are retarded, because retards don't have smartphones. You know? Retards don't need smartphones. Yeah, I'm gonna keep calling them retards, too. Because <laughs> I never called them that when I was growing up with them. It was all the other people that I went to school with that were fucking ignorant pieces of shit that made fun of them for something they couldn't even fucking control. You know? Like, you gotta be a real shithead to make fun of a retard. Like, seriously. Like, you're gonna make fun of a mentally challenged person. Really. Like, so... It's my way of fighting back. I make fun of people that aren't mentally challenged that act like they are. You know? It's okay, you just need this to do everything, don't you? How would you get laid? How would you eat? How would you get out of the house? It's like everything is like turning to technology now. The only people that appreciate technology are people that actually value human connection. You know? Because those are the people that need a phone to like be able to talk to people. Like literally talk. Or maybe they Skype or whatever. Um, but like they don't do social media anywhere near as much as these people that don't fucking value human connection and like you know, social media is for people that want to pretend that they have a personality and, uh, really intelligent opinions about the political system. Uh, <laughs> hashtag, I'm going to say something that resonates. You know, sometimes I just listen to the song Two Princes over and over and over again. You guys like the Spin Doctors? Um, yeah, I, I listen to Two Princes over and over and over again, and I pretend that I'm still in 1992, and that the hashtag is still a pound sign. Like, <laughs> that's how, like, I live in this dream. I can do it with music. Most easily. That's why I'm addicted to music, because it, like, just allows this other world to flourish, you know? I do so much better in this other world that it doesn't actually exist. It's just like a better recreation of this one where people actually listen to what I have to say and I'm important. Um, cause I don't really feel important or I don't really feel like people listen to me or give a fuck about me at all. If I committed suicide, nobody would care. And I also feel like I'm a burden on people anyway, so I just might as well do it, you know? <laughs> There's no way to win if you're quite borderline. The only way that you can win is to help other people. Even then, you're still not winning. But at least you've done something good. And that's what I want. That's what I hope to do. I hope to change the world. I hope to save you guys. for my future of unspeakable horror. And it's coming. I can see it coming. I see the future. I've always seen the future, and most of the time I'm right. Sometimes I'm wrong. I'll totally admit that. I have no problem admitting that I'm wrong. So if anybody wants to make a comment, a mean comment, go, go right ahead. I'd love it. Like, Just boosts my ego, you know? Just makes me know, like, okay, you're doing the right thing. You're saying shit that matters to you. It obviously doesn't matter to these people, or they wouldn't be fucking hostile towards you. So, that's why I don't care about you. If you don't care about the things that I care about, like, like, you don't care about racism. You don't care about animal cruelty. You don't care about a bunch of children that are being molested left and right. All because of the pro-life movement can't shut the fuck up and just let people make decisions on their own without trying to influence those decisions and, like, label somebody all because they're doing something you don't agree with. It's like, I just, man, I just want to take people down. <laughs> I hope this goes viral, but it probably won't. <laughs> and, like, whether it goes viral is, like, contingent on, like, what you say about it. Like, 
Because if, if you if you name the video, you want to watch me cry about racism in the bed for two hours, like, it's not, I don't think that'll sell. I'm going to have to watch this whole thing again. No, but this is probably one of the best ones that you've done because you're really upset. Thing is, I'm so much funnier when I'm myself, you guys. I'm so much funnier and I'm so much better when I'm just who I am. This is who I am in this bed right now. I'm PTSD perfect, okay? I might be on the borderline of psychosis, but... Fuck. I'm right. <laughs> I'm right about everything. That's the price. That's the price you pay to be right, is that you're just fucking miserable. <laughs> and you end up calling out of work because you can't stop crying. About how much the world sucks.